Coraline rehearsal recording for the 1610 Vespers by Claudio Monteverdi. Second tenor. On this recording, the tenor part is represented by the sound of a French horn. Here's a short example. That's the end of the example, but remember you can use your stereo balance control to further enhance or diminish your own vocal line. You'll find that the accompaniment is played on the organ throughout, as are any soloist's cues, though these are on a contrasting registration. Although we hint at tempi and dynamics on this recording, we've generally kept these fairly neutral, as they'll be at the discretion of your conductor. Please remember that this recording contains copyright material, and that it's illegal to allow any part of it to be copied. Music of this period allowed considerable freedom of interpretation for performers, so although we played as accurate an interpretation as possible, you may find that you're singing slight variations from this. Because of 17th century ambiguities, there are a number of differences between the various editions of the score, but you'll find that most modern editions contain excellent notes on performance. One ambiguity regards the different specifications for the plainsong antiphons at the start of each movement. How these are performed will be solely at the discretion of your conductor, so we've not included them here. However, antiphons within a movement are represented on this recording, but only as sustained chords. Also, many of the accidentals were not written into the music, but left to the discretion of the performers. On this recording, we've chosen what we believe are the most commonly used accidentals, but occasionally your conductor may ask you to sing an alternative to what we have played. Finally, some movements may be sung at a pitch different to the one we've indicated here. So here are the Vespers Movement by one. Claudio Monteverdi. Domine ad adjuvandum, or Deus in adjutorium. We'll come straight into this movement. So here's your first note. And... Movement 2. Dixit Dominus. Your choral director may designate some of this movement to a semi-chorus or to solo singers. However, we've assumed that all of the movement will be sung by the chorus. There are a number of antiphon sections within this movement where the words are fitted freely, as in plain chant. For these passages, we've merely played the cording and have left the actual rhythm to the discretion of your conductor. 
at the start of this movement, interpretation of how voices are to be split varies between the different editions of the score. So in a moment we'll play the tenor part as indicated in the Novello edition. For those singing the Quintus part from the OUP edition, then use the tenor part on this recording for all but the opening 22 bars, which we'll play now. Other so editions firstly, usually the follow opening one of for these. the OUP Quintus part. And... From here on, your part is the, the same dominance. as for the Novello edition. For those singing the OUP Quintus line, use this part from bar 24 onwards, but beware there are four notes different in bars 270 and 271. The second tenors come straight in, so as a cue, here are the last couple of bars from the first movement. And... And... 